Hi everyone, you keep asking me and asking me about solar flares and magnetic storms. Can they cause an earthquake? So since you are so curious about that, I took a deep dive in what's available, what science is available, what studies are available. The USGS especially has a lot of information. So here is the answer guys, because this question, pops up very, very often. Do solar flares or magnetic storms cause earthquakes? They especially pop up um, when people see both events happening sort of at the same time. And on one hand, we have solar flares and magnetic storms. We have explosive outbursts from the sun that we call space weather. So is space weather responsible for earthquakes? So these storms, the space weather, they send waves of charged particles racing towards the Earth. That doesn't sound good, right? But of course, they can disturb our planet's magnetic field. That is scientifically proven. And the effects also, they're real. Like satellites can malfunction, uh, GPS signals can be disrupted, radio communications can fade, and even power grids can fail. But is this space weather strong enough to really have a deep impact so that it could cause or favor earthquakes? Could these bursts of energy from the sun shake the solid ground beneath our feet? That's the question you always keep asking, and uh, we will look into this. The short answer is no, and I'll tell you why. So at first glance, the idea sounds logical. Bursts of energy from the sun, solar flares, magnetic storms, are they powerful enough to shake the earth and trigger earthquakes? Yeah, people believe in that or they think this is true. Um, both are dramatic and natural events, that's for sure. But they also both they involve massive amounts of energy and both can happen suddenly and also unpredictably. But when we dig into the science behind it, the picture becomes much clearer. Let's first look at what exactly are solar storms and magnetic fields, because then the answer becomes already a little bit clearer. So solar flares are colossal explosions on the surface of the sun, and they release radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum, like from radio waves to x-rays and gamma rays. And sometimes these flares launch billions of tons of charged particle into space. And that material is traveling at incredible speeds, guys. It interacts, of course, yes, with the Earth's magnetic field because they are charged. So when this happens, we experience a geomagnetic storm. It's often referred to as space weather. And Yes, these storms are not just any abstract phenomena. They can create the real problems that I just mentioned for our modern world. For an ancient world, pfft, no problem, right? No GPS signals, no satellites, no navigation system. So, yeah, our GPS signals can drift, of course, high frequency radio transmissions, um, can fade in severe cases. If it's really, really severe, power grids can collapse. Um, there's a famous example from 1989 when a geomagnetic storm knocked out electricity in Canada, in Quebec, and that has left millions in the dark. So yes, it does have effects. So there's no doubt the sun influences the earth in very, very powerful ways. We couldn't live without the sun. But does that influence extend all the way into the solid crust of the earth? Is it strong enough to cause earthquakes? How do earthquakes really work? So to answer that, we need to shift our focus, of course, to the ground beneath us. Earthquakes are not surface events. That has to be clear 
and it is kind of clear, right? Um, that's the first step. We need to know, understand. And they're driven by forces deep inside the Earth. And then our planet's outer shell is divided into tectonic plates. And we know these tectonic plates are causing problems because they're constantly moving. They're crushing into each other. They're subducting underneath. And these movements, what is driving these movements? These movements are driven by the heat inside the Earth's mantle where basically rock flows like an incredibly slow liquid, molten rock. And then when the plates grind past each other, they collide or they're pulling apart, stress builds up along fault lines. And when the stress finally overcomes the strength of the rock, it breaks. And then it releases energy in the form of seismic waves that is the shaking that we then feel as an earthquake. By the way, check out my video about Afghanistan. Very controversial topic, absolute devastation, but there's also a controversy. I have made a poll about that. Check it in the end screen. So we understand earthquakes are powered by internal heat and pressure and not by outside influences like solar storms. Now many people will say, well, the solar storms, can they influence the internal heat of the Earth? What about the sun rays? Here's where it gets kind of interesting, guys. The sun's radiation is unimaginably strong. That's out of debate. Because every, every second, the Earth is receiving about 1,360 watts of energy per square meter at the top of the atmosphere, at the top of the atmosphere. And that's called the solar constant. And it's spread over our entire planet. The sun provides roughly 170,000 terawatts of energy. So very, very powerful. So that is thousands of times more than all human civilization together consumes. And this energy, really, I said it, we cannot live without it. It drives basically everything at the Earth's surface. It warms the ground, it fuels wind and weather, it powers photosynthesis, and it sustains life. But does it go deep enough to trigger tectonic activity? And again, the answer is no. The USGS makes that also very, very clear. Sunlight only penetrates the top few feet of soil or ocean water. But the crust of the earth, guys, it's miles thick, miles. And the earthquake usually originate far below that at depth ranging from a few miles to hundreds of miles. So by the time you reach those depths, the sun's heat has no measurable effect. So I want to make it clear, the forces that are driving earthquakes, they're coming from the Earth's internal heat, leftover energy from our planet's formation, and the ongoing decay of radioactive elements. This would blow up the video if we go into that and explain all these forces. So let's get back to the sun. While the sun's rays dominate our climate and our surface conditions, no question, they do not influence the tectonic engine that produces earthquakes. But still, scientists have looked for patterns and there was an interesting report from the USGS. So scientists have tested the idea of solar seismic connection. So they wanted to make sure that they're not wrong about this. So, and this is interesting. The sun has a clear 11 year cycle of activity. So during solar maximum, flares and magnetic storms are frequent. And during solar minimum, they are rare. And now it gets interesting. So if solar activity was to influence earthquakes, we should see 
seismic activity rising and falling in steps with this 11 year cycle, right? So we should see the earthquakes if the flares are up during solar maximum. But when the researchers compared and still compare global earthquake records with the solar cycle, they find no correlation. And I think this is the easiest way to debunk that theory. Earthquakes occur randomly in time following the slow buildup of stress in the earth and not the rhythm of the sun. In other words, earthquakes don't care if the sun is calm or stormy. So why is then so much confusion about this? Why does that exist? Part of that confusion comes from coincidence. Imagine we're having a big solar storm and then a few hours later, a major earthquake strikes, can strike somewhere in the world, doesn't matter. Um, so it's natural for people to connect the two, right? But in science, correlation is not causation. So this is important when you look at studies and when you look at scientific reports, and this is how this works. Correlation is not causation. You have to find causation. The timing is chance, not cause or effect. Another reason what many psychologists point out is that our minds like, they love patterns. So we're wired to connect events together especially disasters. This is in our nature. This is another interesting part of science, psychology in this, in this case. So, but if we look at the pure science to find out whether that is true or not, science requires more than just pattern spotting. It requires evidence, mechanisms, and guys, repeatability. And so far, no convincing mechanism shows how space weather could directly trigger seismic events. So could there be then indirect effects? Some scientists continue to ask whether solar activity might have a subtle indirect effect. For example, could geomagnetic disturbances slightly alter the stress in the crust? Could solar particles influence groundwater or volcanic gases, which in turn could affect the pressure? So could the sun come through the back door, basically? These are interesting ideas, but so far the evidence shows that any such effects are negligible compared to the overwhelming forces that are already driving tectonics. The, everyone comes to the conclusion, the sun's influence stops at the surface and the upper atmosphere, while earthquakes are born from far below. Maybe think of it that way. Space weather impacts the ionosphere and magnetosphere. These are the very outer layers of Earth's environment. And earthquakes, by contrast, originate miles underground in the brittle crust and sometimes in the upper mantle. So the distance between those layers, both in space and physical process, is enormous. So solar flares or magnetic storms, they're separate natural phenomena from earthquakes. That's why the answer to the original question, again, is no. Both areas are governed by different, entirely different processes. Space weather can knock out power grids, disrupt satellites, but it does not shake the ground. The earthquakes will continue regardless of whether the sun is quiet or erupting with storms. But one thing is sure, this doesn't make either phenomenon less important. Studying space weather is very important and it helps us to protect satellites or power grids and the modern technology that, that, that's so vital, has so become so vital for us. 
And of course, studying the earthquakes helps us to prepare for seismic hazards. I think we can say both, both phenomena remind us that we live on a planet that is shaped and influenced by forces way beyond our control. Sometimes their events overlap, but they are not causally linked. So the next time you hear about a solar flare and an earthquake in the same week, for example, remember the quake comes from the restless heart of the earth itself, not from storms on the sun. So guys, I hope this answers your questions that you repeatedly ask. And if you liked it, please leave it a like. Hype the video. It's where your comments are. You can press the hype button. And if you want to fill me up with coffee, guys, it's greatly appreciated. I have a buymeacoffee.com slash silky website. The link is on the description of this video. Thank you for your supers. Welcome to all new members, guys. I hope you liked the poll in my last video. I'm always putting these polls at the end. So stay tuned for the next one and check out the videos in the end screen. An earthquake in Afghanistan, absolutely catastrophic, but so much more, guys. I see you in the next one. Stay safe.